Many of us are aware of the fact that Joe Biden is not the biggest fan of Tesla, but recently something happened that changed everything. Welcome to Elon Musk Center. Today, we are going to talk about how Tesla and Elon Musk might have saved the United States. Before we begin, why don't you hit that subscribe button so that you won't miss any updates from us. With that note, let's get started. Tesla is the brand that is leading the EV industry. Whenever you talk about EVs, you have to mention Tesla or Elon Musk in some case or fans will get angry. This company gave electric cars the respect that they deserve. Before the arrival of Musk, EV was just a sub part of the car industry, but this man came and took the EVs to the mainstream. It won't be outrageous to say that Tesla is responsible for the rise of EVs. If you're a new company, then you get compared to Tesla. Tesla is like the Goku of EVs. Everyone asks whether they can beat Tesla. New companies also try and live up to the standards that Tesla has already set. They also try to walk in Tesla's footsteps. They're creating most of the elements in-house and releasing expensive cars first. These are the tactics that they learned from Tesla. You know your company is the best when your car gets 1 million pre-orders even after thousands of delays. We all know the Cybertruck has been delayed for years now and it's still one of the most anticipated and awaited vehicles. It doesn't even look that extraordinary, but still people are crazy about it. Tesla is also one of the leading contenders in the battery industry. The new 4680 battery is something that has a capability of revolutionizing the industry. This battery can last longer and charge up quicker. It's also cheaper than others. And if we talk about SpaceX, it's a company working on making space travel cheaper and safer for everyone. With the new Starship, they are far ahead of the competition. It's the only company that NASA trusts with sending the astronauts to space. When you're an American company which is doing exceptionally well and providing countless numbers of jobs for the country, then it doesn't make sense for the president to hate you. This guy did everything that was basically impossible. He made a rocket that was cheaper than everyone else and gave it to NASA. He made electric cars that are cheaper than the regular gas car when you comprehend the gas prices. Then he made a network so you can charge this thing wherever you go. Basically impossible. A guy who is trying to change the American lifestyle. Then, when the leader of the country hates you, it comes like a bummer. Maybe Biden doesn't like the change. But that's not the case, I suppose. So why? In an interview, Elon Musk went a little overboard and used the Sleepy Joe slang. Sleepy Joe is a slang that was used by Donald Trump during the campaign. By this, he meant that Joe Biden is suffering from the cognitive decline of his mental ability. So, from where does this all start? It started in the month of October of 2021. In this, some auto executives were invited to the White House to discuss about increasing the production of electric vehicles in the country. Officials from Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis were all invited. Surprisingly, there was no invitation that was sent to Tesla. It's like hosting the family dinner and not inviting your dad. But of course, this is only true if your family's not separated. And now if I think about this joke, it sounds a bit inappropriate. But now because I've recorded it, I'm not taking it back. Anyway, getting back on topic, it sounds so stupid as Tesla is the largest EV maker. It could happen because Tesla's factory workforce is not unionized, and if we talk about Biden, he is a big supporter of unions. Maybe that's the reason why he didn't think it would be essential to invite Tesla to the meeting. Goddamn politics. Elon Musk felt the same way as any human being would feel after such an incident. He felt hurt. In an interview with Kara Swisher, Elon Musk went ahead and told her that the Biden administration is not so friendly and the union plays a significant role in the administration. After listening to his comment, Cindy Estrada, the vice president of the auto worker union, tweeted against Elon. She said, quote, He needs to stop whining and just admit that workers should not punch out democracy when they punch into work. Good leaders aren't afraid of smart workers but embrace Brace them. End quote. Well, I personally have nothing against this lady, but still, she was the prime target of FBI investigation for inter union corruption back in 2017. Now, I'm not saying anything. You guys are brilliant on your own, after all. Almost as brilliant as she is astute while using the money of people she should be helping. Getting back on topic, Elon Musk is totally against the union. This could be said as the auto worker union tried a lot to unionize the workforce at the Tesla headquarters. Tesla headquarters has a workforce of almost 10,000, but unions fail every time. He also violated the labor law when he tweeted against it and said that the employees would lose their stock options if they even tried to unionize. In the end, he had to delete this tweet, but you have a good idea that he hates unions. 
when the president doesn't support you, there's not much you can do. I also feel a bit sad for Elon Musk, but recently something happened that changed everything. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, met with the senior White House aides John Podesta and Mitch Landrieu last month to examine the possibility of extending the automaker's market-leading charging network to accommodate electric vehicles that aren't Tesla. The White House ultimately acknowledged that without Tesla and Musk, they couldn't have advanced sustainability as quickly as they'd want. Since the Biden administration assumed office, they have been sluggish to acknowledge the advancements that both Tesla and Musk have made in the EV sector. Whether you like him or not, Musk is a pioneer in the field of passenger transportation. It's highly likely that EVs would not be as well known or as timely if it weren't for him and Tesla. Prior to the Washington Post speaking to two people with the knowledge of it, the specifics of the meeting between Musk, Podesta, and Landrieu at the White House were a secret. According to the sources, Tesla was willing to discuss opening the access up to charging networks to other EV makers, whether they were established corporations or startups, rather than retaining exclusive access to it. Tesla did not, however, fully embrace the concept. The Tesla Supercharger Network is one of the company's biggest benefits. Everyone's aware that Tesla offers a large selection of cars, including its first pickup truck, the Cybertruck, as well as a commercial truck with the Semi. The world's 43,000-plus superchargers, many of which are located in the United States, provide dependability, consistency, and a great footprint that stretches from heavily used roads to even rural America. Many are even located close to hotels, convenience stores, and other entertainment venues. But despite expanding its vast network of charging stations, growing production, and upending the whole automotive industry, Tesla has not received the Commander-in-Chief's approval. Instead, Biden has concentrated on many other businesses, such as General Motors, which is famed for its You Did It Mary line. No offense to General Motors, of course, they're succeeding in their own right. Yet it is simply wrong to deny Tesla and Musk the respect that they so richly merit. Government funding up to billions has been set aside by the White House to encourage the use of sustainability. Since most people spend some time in a vehicle during the course of the day, EVs are one of the most contributors to this endeavor. Musk has observed that the Trump House has not particularly enjoyed mentioning him or Tesla. Likewise, his staunchest backers. But the Biden administration is at its limit. It's time to swallow the administration's arrogance and simply ask Tesla if they would consider it given Tesla's significant contributions to the EV infrastructure and its plan to build 500,000 new EV charging stations in the US market. The moment has come and the ball is now in Tesla's court. Next, according to a statement made by the White House the previous year, Tesla would start producing new supercharger equipment that would permit non-Tesla EV users in North America to utilize Tesla superchargers. And finally, earlier this year, Tesla's smartphone app revealed information about what it terms the magic dock. This demonstrated the prospective addition of a CCS-compatible connector to supercharger heaps, allowing for the charging of additional EVs. It is a significant choice, since $7.5 billion is at stake, money that Tesla might use to improve its own charging infrastructure. Yet, in order to be eligible, the business must make it possible for other EVs to charge at its superchargers. And this was all for today. Do let us know what your thoughts are on this topic down in the comment section below. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.